Good evening and welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, joining us via multiple social media channels, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, and the Dr. Fundi website. Welcome to the Dr. Fundi channel. Um, today, it's day 66, uh, approximately eight weeks since South Africa went on lockdown. Um, we went on lockdown on the 26th of March. Uh, many of our compatriots are running on, 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 on low spiritually and also psychologically. Um, it's been a long eight weeks uh, as we are on the eve of getting to the level three uh, lockdown. Um, a lot of people are experiencing anxiety, uh, depressive symptoms. Uh, people are worried about their jobs. A lot of retrenchments uh, that are happening around because many companies are struggling. Uh, many people who are looking for jobs are starting to lose hope because of what they hear and what they see. Uh, and so we decided uh, today that uh, we need uh, to invite a special guest to help us to make spiritual sense uh, about everything that uh, we are going through. It's a very challenging road. Uh, and so uh, our special guest today is Pastor Joe Siolwane of Good News of Hope Ministries. Uh, we have invited him to share his wisdom, spiritual wisdom, uh, and to give us an uplifting uh, spiritual dose so that we can soldier on uh, and continue to deal with the trials and tribulations that we find ourselves in uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic. So, Pastor Josie Olwane. Just unmute yourself. How, yeah. how are you, Doc? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, Brad Joe, and how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> Welcome to our channel. Long time, eh? Long time no see. I see your beard has grown. Yes, you know, it's part of the lockdown blues. You know, uh, some of us have been hoping that when we move to level three, they will also allow for the saloons and the grooming centers, you know, to allow us to go and uh, look after our beard and all of that. But uh, that did not happen. But at least on the spiritual side, uh, churches are now allowed to at least do what they do best, although there's still some limitations in terms of the number of people uh, who can attend a service. So Correct. we'll start at that point uh, to say, how has it been uh, to have to deliver to your flock uh, via virtual means? And what does it mean, uh, the fact that uh, from tomorrow, you can actually have contact sessions, obviously with restrictions, uh, with the members of Good News of Hope Ministries? Yeah, no, thanks a lot, uh, Doc. Um, and it's been good. I've been watching and following what you've been doing on this channel. You've been doing a good job. So congratulations, maybe I, in order to start off. Uh, secondly, it has, been quite a, it has been quite a tough one for the churches. And uh, I think we need to contextualize it to saying those churches that had structures and well-oiled uh, processes that whether during COVID or outside that process, they could be able to continue as normal uh, because it was a restriction of closing the church buildings, not closing the church. Yes. Because the church has been continuing on a virtual platform like these ones. And um, we've been one of those uh, that we've been fortunate that a, a substantial number of our membership could be able to connect and disseminate the information where they, they live. 
but it has not been so with everyone. I think it would be remiss of me if I could say that it has been easy for most churches. Um, I mean, to simple things like uh, where the congregants, when they come to church, they don't necessarily believe in the EFTs and uh, banking transfers for giving unto God. They believe to be there by themselves and present that, and that was not happening. And most then churches, obviously their income stream was affected. That included then that those, those um, uh, churches that also had staff which needed money to run and uh, meet the operational expenses started feeling a strain to a point where some pastors I have learned that actually were kicked out out of those who were maybe uh, renting their homes because they couldn't afford to pay because they were receiving no income uh, even from the churches because they don't um, um, have access to electronic means of banking or also because they are not there, some people were not just encouraged to give. So that's one part. Then yes. the, second, the second group, it is where actually churches started being innovative and started using the technology to really reach out their members and operated churches from their homes. And uh, through those, they have managed through Facebook, um, this kind of platform of Zoom, uh, connected with their members on a you know, live basis, or at least send WhatsApp messages of encouragement. You'll recall that you know, when there are uh, psychosocial issues, there is the medical side of it, but there is also the spiritual side of it. Yes. And people were receiving the one part after like uh, the other specialties were allowed you know, to operate about a, um, a few weeks ago, and then uh, which were not maybe more of those of COVID uh, related conditions. But yeah. then the spiritual side was left out unaddressed. So to us, it is a welcome decision by the uh, government and the president to announce that the churches uh, would be uh, allowed to open uh, under the regulations if there has been gazetted. But we need to also understand that then that pushes the responsibility to the church. Almost government says, you as a church, you have now the infrastructure, you know what the regulations are, go and meet those uh, requirements. And if you meet those requirements, then um, you are operating within the law. Yes. Now, you know, again, Fortunately, we have a health and wellness ministry that with the oversight of the elders and deacons, we're doing an assessment report to be able to look at when will we be ready. And that report I am expecting in the next week or so. Yes. But for now, we are not going to open until we are sure that we can take the responsibility of what now we have been given uh, to saying, you can with these limitations, but you have to ensure that you meet this kind of criteria. So until we feel that we are at the readiness level to do that, we will remain open using the online platforms and not with physical contact. Okay. But you know, you can't, you can't, you can't bury people with uh, virtual burials. Yes. I mean, for this past two weeks, I had to be able to go and uh, get my permits to really do those kind of ceremonies. So it has not been easy uh, to do that because also when you get there, you've got to be able to be sure that you, you still keep to the distance that has been announced. So it has not been easy, but I'm glad that most churches are now having the responsibility. And I believe that each and every leader of the church will exercise their right uh, means of ensuring that when they say the members can come, they have taken all the precautions and they have opened up uh, uh, themselves to saying, we are now taking the responsibility. But the problem is that most of our members travel by public transport to church. Yes, yes. Which is another challenge then. If they were driving to church, you'd say it's easier, but then they, they, they use public transport. So you really want to be before you saying I can be able to say I'm ready to open you have to look at all the kind of um, 
value in logistics to, to see whether where could the danger be because you don't want to say the church is open and you've got to do mass burials as a church does not look well so i'll stop there that's it exactly but i want to be able to say we commend government in saying yes they would be they would be opened and it is then putting a very hefty responsibility on the church leaders and i hope and believe that the church leaders will do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you for, for, for that response, Brajo. Um, I think it paints a very, um, you know, practical, you know, picture. Uh, you guys are not rushing to get back to church. You want to make sure that, uh, you know, you have covered the bases so that uh, as people come for spiritual upliftment, they are not living uh, with the coronavirus in their Correct. bodies yeah and and i think uh, uh, i think that's the right uh, kind of approach uh, you know uh, because like you said uh, the government has now decided okay uh, you as the leaders take responsibility uh, we have been uh, parenting you people uh, for all this time it's about time then that the leaders of church now take the responsibility and uh, run with making sure that their people are healthy Correct. Yes. Right. Now, um, let's zoom into the, dis uh, you know, the discussion today. Uh, in my intro, Brajo, I mentioned that uh, the lockdown period on its own um, and the events, you know, that people are predicting post-lockdown, post uh, there's a lot of anxiety. Mm. Yep. There's a lot of people who are depressed because they've already received letters of termination of employment. You know, those who were looking for jobs, it is looking bleak for them to get jobs because people, companies are downsizing, companies are closing. So there's a lot of emotional uh, pain uh, out there and it can only get worse. Uh, and so I felt then that, uh, you know, I want you to help us to just make sense it's not the first time in the history of humankind that uh, there has been Correct. you know something of this nature maybe it's the first time since 1918 you know uh, in this uh, you know uh, in the recent times you know however before there have been plagues before uh, that have actually decimated millions of humans now um, earlier today i was just uh, following one of the virtual church, um, you know, crossings. And something that made a lot of sense to me or resonated with me, uh, this reverend was talking about this COVID-19 pandemic uh, lockdown period is actually a Kairos moment uh, for yeah. humanity. Uh, mm -hmm. Meaning uh, it's the right moment. It's an opportune yeah. moment for humans yep. to reflect. Now, I want you Correct. to just take us through to say, um, why is it an opportune time for humans to reflect from a spiritual point of view? Mm, that's a, uh, that's a, um, a uh, heavy question to pose on, an, on a Sunday afternoon. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it is true, Throughout history, there has been various pandemics. And uh, when they happened, there would always be a question where the people who lived at that time had to reflect and say, what is it that we need to do? And uh, it also goes in cycles. And those cycles tend to be either in hundreds. And I, I think you would, you would be well aware that even this one, the other West one was around 1918 or so. Yes, about one so, or two years ago, yeah. Sorry? I'm saying yeah. 102 years ago, you're right. 102 years, yes. So, but th those cycles, and uh, because they are not perfect signs in terms of that, but you could be able to do a trend analysis when these kind of things happen. But yes. when they happen, that move always changes the way society lives and views life and values life. 
and not to take anything for granted. And, uh, you know, the other pandemics happen in between and they tend to be either, you know, for specific societies, but the ones that become very global, like um, uh, the COVID-19 has been, they have a pattern that has been coming through. And I don't think maybe we would have enough time of looking no. at that. But if you, if you look at those patterns, you would find that those who are conscious in their spirituality or their spiritual connection always read uh, something into it. Or if, let's say, they believe in prophecy, they would have seen in a prophetic sense of why it happened and maybe uh, uh, God has something that needs to talk to them and they have not been listening. And uh, when you look at this condition, there is one thing that it has done. It has equalized all the inequalities of who can be able to survive this condition. And uh, with me, when I look at that, yes, Isaiah, the, the prophet, if you actually would have been going through to the scriptures in Isaiah 26, verse 20, there is also a similar event. And I think um, some of your viewers can be able to look at those scriptures uh, by themselves. But if I were just to give a hint, it is that it says, come my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself for a little while until the fury has passed by. And to me, this is a perfect scripture you know, to what you are, are saying that, you know, when, when, when there is a call from the prophet Isaiah saying in Isaiah 26, 20, as we have read, come yes. my people, enter your chambers. It means enter your houses yes. and shut your doors behind you. And this is not forever. It is just for a little while. So if people were to understand that it is for a little while, uh, then the kind of anxiety and what you've just mentioned in your opening remarks on this particular topic, you would realize there would not have been those mental issues because people would have entered willingly knowing that there is a greater purpose that they don't understand, but if they just stay in for a little while, things will work out themselves that by, that by the time they come out of it, they will find that they are stronger than when they went in. Yes. And I want to use personally as an example, uh, I've been a very busy person, uh, still doing the work of the Lord, but I think this almost 60 days has made me to hear God in a different way than I have had when I used to travel, be flying up and down, I still did my work and um, you know, served the church the best way I could, but I felt that this time has been a sobering moment that I could have a spiritual reconnection at a deeper level. Yes. As you speak, I can tell you that even how we have started servicing the church, and I talked about that, you know, we use the you know, as we speak now, I can be able just to pull out one of the mics, if let's say you can see in front of you, yeah. that actually now created working from home um, in terms of doing work and actually church. That actually we've created a virtual studio at home that is well equipped. Yeah. Now, when it's like that, I mean, it just tells you that I would not have done this in my busy schedule. I would not even have thought about it. Yes. So God speaks to us in terms of that practical, innovative, where we have to apply our mind differently. Then yes. there is a spiritual side where it says, check yourself, put your house in order. And then he starts dealing with us to saying, I need you to clean up yourself reconnect because sometimes we take spirituality or Christianity or whatever is the belief system for granted yes. that oh, I will wake up in the morning. These days you can wake up in the morning, but we're not too sure when you come back, whether you're still as, as healthy as you left in the morning. Yes. So there is that spiritual connection that happens with such. We have seen also the coming together just in South Africa, 
for once after quite a lot of commotion, the government and the opposition parties were talking as one. Yes. Until obviously, you know, as you prolong, like any other thing, like a strike and the like, the longer it prolongs, then the long, you know, the more than people start pulling away from each other. Yes. And also the economic situation of that are very real. Yes. So we need to be able to be mindful of all these things. And to me, it is, we shouldn't be judgmental about whether some pastors believe that they want to go back or some believe they don't want to go back. We need yes. to just be able to say, everyone must take accountability for their actions and for the actions of those are, which are put under their care. Yes. Wow. Now, um, along the same lines, Plato, uh, you mentioned that, uh, you know, it's a sobering moment for you personally, you connecting with God at a much deeper level. Um, and uh, there is this talk about, <coughs> this is a moment to, you know, to, to reflect and reset, you know? Correct. Uh, uh, Correct. So that when people emerge after lockdown, yeah. they are better versions of themselves. Correct. Correct. Not necessarily for themselves, but for all God's creations. Correct. Nature uh, and everything else. So uh, for individuals who have been sitting at home, others getting bored, um, you know, the issue of introspection, mm -hmm. uh, you know, going deeper within yourself, which is not an easy thing, Brajo. Most of the time, yep. uh, we want, uh, you know, we, we, we get distracted uh, by many things because going deep within you uh, sometimes causes you a lot of pain. That's okay. why, you know, so... Um, as we are navigating this lockdown period, uh, yes, it's being relaxed from tomorrow, but still, it's still a lockdown period. How important is mm -hmm. it for individuals to consciously go within themselves and also to connect with the creator? If people have not done that to connect within themselves in the last few weeks of, uh, or almost eight weeks of um, uh, lockdown, it will be difficult for them to do that because from the total shutdown to the stage four, that is where actually there were most restrictions and uh, this has caused us to be able to go uh, deep into ourselves. I mean, I want to use another example that from a family point, I want to confess publicly that I had for quite some time, not spend a dinner at a scheduled time, sitting together on a dining room table for quite a number of years now. We will be, you know, so we connected not even within ourselves, but with family. Yes. And I even said to some people that, you know, we, we, I, I learned even more to take care of family matters because family matters. And that happened because I had to go deep into myself and saying, what do I value? What do I want to be remembered for one day when I'm not, I'm gone? Will I just be want to be remembered for of like I was a, a hard worker and did all the kind of things. And yet the family says, but we never saw him. We never felt him. We saw yeah. his presence, but we never had his presence. And wow. if then that is a situation, it will be a pity that they will remember what I've done for them in terms of material things, but they cannot remember how much I valued them with my time. Because anybody that you value, you need to give them your time. Yes. Money and materials are show-offs, but if people are being valued, they need the space to be given that they can be able to connect. And that connection, if you don't connect with yourself, you cannot connect with others. It's like when you're hurting, we always say as pastors that hurting people hurt. Yes. So we cannot allow that to go on 
uh, in a prolonged time without members getting access for some counseling, even if it's like virtual counseling or, you know, sitting face to face because of confidentiality, people don't trust sometimes gadgets. Who's listening, yes. who is talking the conversation, even if you're saying, you know, as a doctor, you would say, you know, trust me, I'm your doctor. Yes. But it's very difficult for people who want to pour out their hearts to do it virtually. Yes. So there yes. is going to be a balance of those who are comfortable with that. They need to get that such that they can also deal with the issues that arose because we are starting to see and hear the kind of uh, family conflicts that are happening, which had died down you know, at the beginning. So we, we cannot ignore that. And that's why we need to then saying the churches must start being able to responsibly exercise that to those who cannot be able to trust the virtual means, but also making sure that they take responsibility for those that they are counseling. Yes. Now, Prajo, uh, I'm going to change text. Uh, I've been asking you questions uh, just to create a context, but I want to give you the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes to actually minister to us, you know, uh, to minister to us uh, about, you know, uh, this time, you know, hope, how to navigate trials and tribulations and everything else, because uh, I think it's most appropriate, uh, you know, to feed people spiritually rather than us, you know, uh, having this um, intellectual discussion now. So I want to hand over to you, uh, you know, to just drive it. Um, and uh, I will also be listening uh, and uh, going inside of me as well as you are talking. To, over to you. Yeah, I hope it's not going to be able to, uh, you'll, you'll still be able to see me and I can see you. Can you see me? And now you, uh, I can hear you, but I can't see you. Okay. Uh, does it, uh, is it a problem for you? Because then, you know, I'm trying, uh, you know, these days I'm, 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 I've been going through uh, my technological, um, uh, I, I don't know what you call it, you know, to be able to just make sure that I can use technology uh, much better. And I hope I can, I can, I can, I can do that. Um, let's see you, Prajo. Uh, the way you've been, you, we've been talking, uh, let's continue. Let, let me see you. Let the viewers see you. Uh, but uh, yeah. the way you normally do uh, when you are delivering uh, for Good News of Hope. Okay. All right. Let's do that. Let's do that. Right. So um, I hope I'm, I'm back shortly. Yep. Yes. You are in. Maybe shortly, I really want to be able to say all of us to go into ourselves, God creates a hiding place. And we need to find what is it, the hiding place that at any point in time where God can create for me a hiding place. And when I'm saying a hiding place, I'm not talking about where you will hide for people not to see you but where you will consciously take yourself away from people, almost like when you would go for a holiday and saying, yes. I'm, you know, don't call me unless the place is coming down. Uh, I'll call you if I need to check with you and go to a kind of a place where you just disappear. Now, we always think that we must always spend money to hide ourselves but we don't necessarily have to hide ourselves by going away where it's gonna be an expensive place to be able to do that. We need to be able to, to, to look at a situation where you can say, can I be able to take time out where with my family, with my loved ones, if let's say I'm alone, just go by myself and say, I'm just gonna refresh myself, I'm gonna search myself, I'm going to be able to try and connect spiritually such that when I come back from that situation, your entire system, it's like it has been rejuvenated or actually uh, detoxed. Yes. Detox of our busy schedules. What worries me about us who um, 
you know, on the fast lane is that sometimes we even rush ahead of ourselves and find that we no longer find even meaning because we are chasing after things rather than after the connection with the people we value, either as family, friends, relatives, or even overall with God himself. Most people have started having little time of connecting with God or with actually themselves. They kind of like, we feel like we are scared to be by ourselves. And we always want the company of other people because we can talk to them and the like, but we are scared to be with ourselves. And we need to start being comfortable about who we are and, uh, and how we connect with our creator. If that deeper connection is not there, that's why sometimes we don't even, even good leaders become good leaders, but not ethical leaders. And when they are no longer ethical leaders, you start seeing that it is more the ability to do the work rather than the being of connecting with a person that even when they make harsh decisions, they could fire you with a smile and you could be willing to leave the workplace. It's because they treated you, with human, you like, as a human being because they also have a connection with the greater being that makes them know and value themselves and value the lives of others, even if they have to make tough decisions. Yes. During this time with the economic crisis, and we don't even know how long it will take for the recovery of the economy properly. And I want to throw in a statement I've made and um, I stand by it that it could take as, as much as three years for the economic recovery to happen. And I'll say that, you know, when you look at um, what happened in, uh, with um, Elijah uh, in the book of Kings, and I think it's 17 verse three, God says to him, after he has pronounced to the uh, nation that there will be famine for three years, God says, I want you to go to a hiding place. Just go and hide yourself next to the to 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 the brook or uh, and next to the river the river and in that stream or that next to that stream god says you know you're not going to be able to work there's nobody who's going to come here because you are hiding yourself but then he uses you know amakwa baba um to come and feed him so so the eagles actually come and feed him there so there is always there is a sense that if I pull myself out or I take time out, looks like, no, I will, you know, lose everything. And actually you find that people rebound better after the worst situation than actually, if anything, everything was just going smoothly and they were just cruising. Sometimes we do need to be shaken to the, our core for us to be tested like good gold, you put it in fire. And anybody who's not gone through tough times, I do not believe that, that they are ready to talk about tough times if they have not gone through tough situations that they can be able to say, you know, I have gone through that and yet I came back. I've gone through that yet I survived. We need people who could start sharing their experience and saying, this is my story. People are not sharing their stories. We get all the fleshy side of things, but we do not know what they have gone through. And we need to start saying it can be done as long as people start sharing their true story, especially where during tough times, they remain ethical, they remained within themselves, even if let's say they could lose everything, they just know that, you know, I can bounce back and they will do that. And if we can be able to do that, our economy will then be rebuilt by people who will take whatever has happened to their personal life to rebuild the economy. We just need people who now that um, uh, we are going to level three and maybe hopefully to level, you know, uh, two and one, you know, before the end of the year, that will be in saying, Okay, what do we do? We lost everything. You know, the business suffered. We had to shed off some, some of our labor. 
how do we rebuild quickly such that we do not continue uh, putting people under economic pressure? And I believe that it can be done and South Africans have gone through much. We know this and individuals, especially the African nation has gone through that and we can be able to do this uh, together. Yes, Rajo. Um, so, um, obviously, uh, you know, when I started, I said, uh, many are running on low. Yep. Many are running on low. Can you help us to refill those glasses, uh, you know, with hope? Yes, you have given us a picture uh, and you've made us understand that uh, you know, sometimes God allows these situations to happen for a bigger Correct. purpose. Uh, but um, uh, like I said, we're running on low uh, and we need uh, some injection of hope. Uh, yes. And, and, and wisdom as we navigate uh, the trials and tribulations, uh, you know, that have been brought by this uh, COVID-19. So, um, yeah, I'm still leaving it to you again. Yeah, and I want to be able to address it, you know, both from the scripture and um, from, you know, uh, as you know, I, I, I like uh, reading, especially those books that uh, inspire hope. There yes. is a book I've just read just prior to lockdown. It's called Propeller. Yes. As in the propeller. Yes. Step steps to accountability yes it has revolutionized my life and actually i'm gonna send you my summary of that book in one slide beautiful it just tells you that there are people who are uh, above the line and there are those who are below the line yes and those who are below the line is those when situations like this happen, they will find somebody to blame. Yes. It was not my fault. I've done this, but so and so, it was not my job. I, 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 I actually was okay until this and that happened. Yes. And they live in that victim mentality below the line. Yes. Instead of addressing, saying what happened, happened, and it happened for a good reason. Whether I understand it or not, I cannot change and reverse what has happened. Yes. And or I cannot point fingers at anybody because I can start seeing and sensing that people are starting to make um, either political or economic uh, positioning that starts saying, if so-and-so did not take this decision, I would not be the country would yes. not be where it is. Yes. And I call that a below the line mentality. Yes. We need to go through this tough time together. If we were entered it well together, we need to come out of it well together. Yes. If you start well, you must finish well. You cannot, after saying, I agree to come in, into the chambers, but then you didn't want to stay a little while and start saying, no, I'm coming out because I'm saying my situation is worsening more than others. We need to be able to say, right, let's wait and see that the risk is ready for us to come out. And maybe as we talk, then we can come out together, but not blame each other. That's number one. That's below the line. Yes. Victim mentality. Always looking for reasons to cast blame on somebody except themselves. Then what is above the line, it is what actually a person is a catalyst of change. Yes. They no longer focus on what happened to them. They realize that there is a problem. And because they see that, and that there is a problem, they can solve the problem. No one can solve a problem that they have not taken accountability for or yes. responsibility that I can do something about this. So if you see it, you must start owning it and saying, I see there's a problem now of economic crisis. I want to own up 
to saying, I can do something small to help. Yes. I can do something small. And uh, if all the efforts of the combined other people could then be able to help us to, you know, transition because every little bit helps. So when yes. you see it, you own it. When you own it, then you just solve it. And when you solve it, you just do it. You just do what it has to be done. If ever there is then a sense that whatever solution that you thought you were going to do to solve the problem doesn't work out, you just think outside the box and say, what else can I do? Because I followed this one from a process point of view. It looks like it didn't yield the results. Can I think outside the box? And let me just tell you, and with, with you know, again, without um, uh, sounding like a scratch record on what I said about creating the studio at home, yes. we said in February that we wanted to, as a church, we wanted to go global. Yes. We thought that global meant that we needed to get partners in overseas and then, you know, take some guys or the people that we have connection with, which are in Canada, London, and New Zealand, to start branches there. But actually, God was saying, no, no, no. Then he, he, he put us in the chamber during COVID, boom. And yeah. we were locked in, we couldn't be able to travel. We could have said that, no, we couldn't reach our strategy because we are now closed. But this whole digital platform, actually, as we speak, today we just launched a global radio station, and I'll send you the link afterwards. Lovely. So Beautiful project. we are on a global platform from the 31st of May, 2020. Um, um, and and, and uh, as I say, and you, you can share it with your, with your viewers and, uh, and listeners who could be on the other handles uh, of, yes. your, of your platform. When, when I look at that, it then took us differently. Then as we were continuing to build this thing, the technocrats tell me that actually you could be on an online television. So I want to invite yes. you on our online television uh, when it's launched before the end of the year. So, so yes. those are kind of things that we could blame everything to COVID. But actually yes. during COVID, we found innovative ideas that I never thought. Right now, actually, once the schools open, we are going to the Department of um, Basic Education we have uh, two of our um, members who are math experts. They're going to help uh, the matriculants to do a catch-up program on maths, science, and accounting. Well, you would know about yeah. accounting. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm sure you are the one who's going to drive that. <laughs> well, <laughs> the accounting. <laughs> yeah. And, and we've done this, by the way, for the last uh, 16 years. For every matriculant who got a distinction of the core subjects, we were giving them a thousand rand per subject for the, towards their tertiary fees. So yes. we just thought now this platform will help us to, in the comfort of their um, homes after school, to really catch up with the syllabus. And we are hoping that the department will then, then be able to find some kind of um, value in what we'll be doing. We are doing it for those who are willing and um, just uh, we don't do we don't necessarily want to replace what their teachers are doing but we want yes. to close it. so that is the above the line issue that i'm saying i'm a fond believer in terms of that and i try in a little way to saying let let us practice that mm. that that sounds you know very much like uh, you know uh, that some of those uh, habits um from uh you know stephen covey you know oh, yeah. being proactive you know uh, you know first things first you know looking for synergies and, and all of that basically do something you know Correct. do something stop complaining you know it's exactly then that's the above the line that i'm talking about so you know and i invite you you, you know I, I know that the book actually has run out of print because it just went off very quickly, but I think on the digital platforms you can still be able to to find it, and uh, and uh, it's a very good book for me. It has the revolutionized. Propeller. Me. Yes, propeller. Yes. Steps to accountability. Exactly. 
Lovely. So that Lovely. to me, that's a hope that I can say it can be done. From the scripture, we always know that, you know, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. Even when you go through the waters, he says, I will, I'll be with you and the flood will not sweep you away. We will not be swept away by this pandemic. And we really are extending our hearts and our sympathy to those who have lost their loved ones. And we have lost also some close uh, friends and, um, and, and colleagues. And you would and know colleagues. about our, our, our dear friend, uh, uh, Dr. Mini, uh, yes. whom I was uh, very close with and I was working very close with as a regulator. Uh, chair of the regulation uh, you know, uh, board uh, or council. So we yes. have been losing people, but we should never give up to be able to be hopeful that even this shall pass. We shall overcome this situation. Even there is, there is, there is a fire. Yes, this is quite painful. Uh, you know, money has just bent overnight. I mean, it a lot of properties have been lost, but hey, we can be able to rebuild. I always say at church, because we are good news of hope, I said you might be at the end of your rope, but you are not at the end of your hope. Yes. Yes. So we believe that we can be able to, you know, regain what we have lost. And even much more. We know of Job, who actually lost everything. But when he stuck to his fundamental beliefs, he had even much more than what he had lost. So I believe that those who will be resilient will be able to rebuild their businesses and their personal wealth that might have been eroded by the, by the uh, COVID-19 impact to a point where their best is yet to come. I'm saying to all of you, your best, if you thought you've done your best, your best is yet to come. Let's just trust God and do the right thing. Wow, Rajov. Um, I think, uh, you know, you've given us a lot of food for thought, but you also have been very practical uh, in terms of encouraging us. Uh, like I said, uh, many of us are running on empty. Uh, and just, uh, you know, to confess as well that uh, whilst the plan for my uh, health digital channel has been in the making uh, for the last many years and getting postponed um, since September, we've been working on this platform. Uh, okay. and, and when, and when uh, lockdown came, um, it was 80% where we wanted it to be. But then I mm -hmm. decided this is the time to actually use what is working uh, the other components that are not yet working uh, will be completed later. And uh, we've tried to use it for good. Uh, and so uh, it's just one of those things I can say during the lockdown, this is the good that uh, you know, came uh, from you know, plans that I was still saying, maybe next year when it is 100% completed, uh, then we will do this, we'll do that. But, uh, COVID-19 pandemic happened and the lockdown happened and uh, we had to bring forward the plans to actually because uh, we find that there isn't enough uh, of platforms that actually address what is closest to my heart, which is matters of health. Uh, yeah. Current affairs on, you know, in the area of health um, and, and just um, public health you know, information sharing there isn't enough for such platforms. And that is the basis for setting up this. And so uh, it was not part of my plans to start uh, in March, mm -hmm. but here we are uh, and uh, we're still on the journey. So at least that's something that I can say, I see similarity with what uh, Good News of Hope Correct. has been planning to do. Uh, and uh, those have had to be brought forward by circumstances. Uh, and uh, I'm sure many other people can achieve the same. Uh, you know, plans that they thought was God's plans and our plans are never, you know, always in sync. And uh, his plans are, are always, you know, uh, better than our, our, human, yeah. our human plans. Yes. So um, it's encouraging to then know that uh, 
you guys have decided to go global as at today, uh, yeah. and your vision has just expanded by just leveraging technology. And uh, for that, you know, I want to congratulate uh, the good news of hope. Um, Thank you. Thank you. But we reciprocate that. Uh, because I, I also want to know, I, you know, I think you know me better that I've, I'm open to any contributions and those who have, who have more knowledge in technology than I do. I'm not a technology person. I'm yes. just being visionary. And I hope that somebody is through your platform will come and say, have you thought of this? And uh, when yeah. that comes through and also those strategic partnerships are saying, you know, health matters even at the church so yes. as you as you've done before know that even on this platform the invitation is as open as it was open during the open doors of the physical building so i hope yes. you will be able to say you know i just felt the brainwave to say this to your congregation can i use your platform to talk and sometimes we can even inter inter stream and yes. i'm, I'm yes. open Let's do that. And um, I'm saying congratulations. It is actually, I was watching the yesterday's one, even also yeah. with Johnny Broomberg. Yes. Um, I've been watching and following all, all those. So it's a wonderful platform. Thank you. Thank you, Prajo. Um, but before we wrap our discussion, Prajo, um, I think uh, like it is uh, the norm when one goes to church uh, yeah. and you get fed um, at the end you know, there are certain things that need to happen. Uh, you yeah. know, that prayer, uh, you yeah. know, that needs to take place. So uh, in the next five minutes, just wrap it up for us. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you that we are coming to the end of the stage four of the lockdown. And you are a God who always helps us to transition. You transitioned, Lord, the early church on the day of Pentecost, that it started impacting the entire world with your word. We are transitioning in our time from one lockdown stage to another. We pray for the illumination of our minds and, Lord, the connection of our hearts to you to hear your heartbeat that will be able, Father, that we do things from the heart and not only just from the head. Lord, we just want to give our total being and those who have been listening to this channel, we speak, O oh God, the heavenly blessings that come from you, that, Lord, you see each and every heart and each and every intention. Lord, I pray that even what any viewer could see as their smallest contribution, you took, Lord, the, and you said, if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, we could be able to move mountains. I pray that, oh God, those who had delayed projects due to COVID-19 and any other delays, Lord, for bringing through what belongs to them, we speak, Lord, heavenly release. That, Lord, you release all those gifts, oh God, to be manifested to your people such that, Lord, as a country and as a people, we can be able to rise up, Lord, from the ashes of what COVID-19 has done to us and to the economy. I pray for the families that have gone through tough times. Lord, I pray that may you bring that spirit of reconciliation. Those who have lost jobs, oh God, we are praying that may they find other means, O oh God, that will be, they will be able to fend for their families, and we pray for your peace. Let your peace that surpasses all human understanding be able to be with your people now and forevermore, till Jesus Christ comes. Amen and amen. Amen. Uh, amen, Brajo. Um, I want to thank you, Brajo, for making time. I asked you at, a ve at very short notice, but uh, you've always been able to come through uh, in many ways. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was hopeful even today, and I was so happy when you responded positively. So I really want to thank you. I know this is an hour uh, of, of, of your family time that I've stolen. 
but uh, you know, um, it has also benefited multitudes of people out there. So I want you to pass my, uh, you know, thanks to Usis Matabu uh, yes. and the young man, uh, yes. and the young man who, you know, yes. who, who up, you know, yes. uh, mm. because I saw him coming to help his daddy who was born before technology, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was before you streamed, you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. We saw him, yeah. But uh, thank you very much, Ebra Joe. And uh, thank you to all our viewers uh, who joined us uh, for this spiritual up upliftment. Uh, it is important, yes, this is a channel about health matters, but I believe uh, in holistic health. And holistic health is physical health, it is psychological health, it is social health, and it's also spiritual health. And the latter is one that has been uh, in our space as medical doctors ignored for quite some time as part of a total package of health. And so um, I am actually actively, you know, ensuring that uh, going forward, uh, I make more noise and actually, yep. you know, prove the concept that uh, without uh, inclusion of, you know, spiritual health, you don't have total mm -hmm. health. And so yep. your being in this channel uh, today is part of feeding the spiritual health of all of those people who took time uh, to view uh, this uh, conversation. So thank you very much, Pajo, and thank you to all our yep. viewers. And uh, what I'll do, I will, with your permission, if you would like, I could uh, be able to let them connect with you for the uh, audio to be replayed uh, tomorrow. No, lovely, Brajo, lovely. And the, 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 the channels uh, as well, you know, we, we've recorded this, so I will send you, uh, you yeah. know, the, okay. the, YouTube, the, the YouTube video uh, of this, uh, you know, of this discussion in the, next ah, 20, 20, 20, in the next 20, 30 minutes, it will be available. That has been perfect. All right. Well, well Thank done. you, <laughs> You really are, are, are buzzing with technology. I'm impressed, the Doc. Huh? <laughs> Pass my regards to the family. And also on, on, on the channel, happy belated birthday. I, I did say birthday to your wife on the day, uh, yes. but happy belated on this channel because it's after uh, the birthday. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, uh, Cousin Debele, maybe you can say it in Debele, you know. I was really, I've been a long all right. Thank you very much, Prajo. Thank you. Sure. And, th and thank, thank you to you. our viewers. Um, yeah. May you have a productive week ahead. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to the viewers. Thank you very much. God bless. Right. God bless.